Time for My Boat. One area of preventative maintenance that you can undertake yourself that could save you thousands of dollars is corrosion protection for your boat's outdrive and engine. The subject of electrolytic and galvanic corrosion is a complex one, but in a nutshell, it involves the interaction of dissimilar metals and the difference in voltage potential that can cause corrosion both on and in your expensive running gear. The first line of defense for your outdrive are the sacrificial anodes. An anode is an unpainted and exposed piece of metal that is designed to wear away slowly from the effects of corrosion or electrical fields within the water. Anodes are often found mounted on the underside of the stern drive's bell housing, on the trim tabs, on an outboard's lower unit, on an inboard's drive shafts or rudders, and under the cavitation plate or mounted to the transom. Their purpose is to protect the lower unit or outdrive and bell housing themselves from being corroded. It's the anode that is sacrificed rather than the mechanical part it protects. Anodes come in a variety of materials originally zinc, but more recently in aluminum and magnesium as well. Aluminum is for salt water, and the best results in fresh water can be achieved with magnesium. Side by side, it's pretty hard to tell the materials apart, so if you're unsure what you have on your outdrive, you should probably replace them. They come in a variety of different sizes and types for various applications, so your dealer can help you out with the correct ones for your boat and the type of water you're in, and also provide you with specialty ones, such as this Mercruiser Bravo 2 prop nut anode. No matter which kind you have, it's a good idea to inspect your anodes annually in the beginning of the season. Since the protection is achieved from both the material itself and the exposed surface area, anodes that show any signs of wear, barnacles, are heavily pitted or that are less than half their original size should be replaced. But what if your boat's exposed to extra risk? And by this we mean shore power on your boat or shore power on a neighbor's boat or through dissimilar metals like a stainless steel propeller or stainless steel trim tabs that results in your anodes being eaten away at a rapid rate. To address this situation, you should consider installing a galvanic isolator such as this Mercathode system. The Mercathode system is an automatic system that blocks galvanic corrosion. It does this with a solid state device that connects to your 12 volt battery system and delivers a blocking current to stop the flow of destructive galvanic currents. Before getting started, a quick review of the instructions and a check of the supplied parts is in order. The first step is to remove the two anodes from the transom bolts and replace them with the supplied plastic caps. Then remove the anode from the hydraulic block at the bottom of the transom assembly. Next, drive the rubber plug out of the hydraulic block to open a passage for the mercathode wiring. Once the plug is out, next feed a length of mechanics wire through the hole in the block and pass it through the cavity below the exhaust assembly into the bilge. Attach the mercathode wiring to the fish wire and pull the wires into the bilge and engine compartment, pulling the mercathode system's electrode into position. With all of the wires in the boat, the electrode is bolted in place on the hydraulic block snugly using the supplied O-ring to create a waterproof seal. Well, we accomplished the hard part, and that was getting the wiring fished up through the hydraulic block and through the transom into the boat. The easy stuff is next, and first up, we're going to install the mercathode solid state unit and then move on to the wiring. First remove the cover from the engine circuit breaker box and disconnect the trim indicator signal wire. Mount the control unit to the lower holes on the circuit breaker box with the supplied bolts and nuts and reattach the cover. Using a self-tapping screw, the two leads of the trim signal wires are reattached to the front right of the unit. The wires from the electrode should be routed over the top of the engine following the route of the wiring harness to the control unit. Next, the brown lead is attached to the R terminal and the orange lead to the A terminal on the control unit. The red power lead with an inline fuse is routed over the engine from the battery and then attached to the positive terminal on the unit. You'll have to make up your own negative lead, so ensure you use marine grade tinned wire and connectors and waterproof the connection with heat shrink tubing. When the lead is complete, attach it to the negative terminal on the control. Finally, secure the wiring with tie wraps and attach the positive, then the negative power lead directly to the battery. That just about wraps this project up, but there's one more thing you can do in the battle against corrosion on your marine engine, and that's spray it with a liberal amount of corrosion guard.